Yo, what's up chefs? This is gonna be an Unholy Death Knight PvP guide for The War Within Season 1. Oh my goodness. Nah, those guys, I mean, these guys just got put in the fucking grinder. However, this guide's probably going to be a bit different than most of the other ones you see on YouTube for PvP or even just build guides in general right now. Primarily because I'm kind of going to breeze over, you know, things like gear, your class talents, hero talents, honor talents, things of that nature, embellishments, you know, all that setting up your character stuff. I'm going to touch on it slightly, but for the most part, I'm going to breeze over it. And I'm really going to focus on what's going on inside the arena, what your job is as an unholy DK, what you're looking to do, how to create pressure, how to secure kills, how to open the arena, and things of that nature, which are things that you typically can't find that easily by just looking stuff up online. When it comes to setting up your character for things like gear, talents, all of that good stuff, this is not a sponsored section, but if you're a new player or you're someone like me who hadn't heard about this website until recently, this website murlocio.io is really going to change your life. Essentially all you have to do, you can find the link in the description, but you come to this website, you can click on whatever class you're interested in. For this case, obviously we're going to be talking about the Death Knight, you go to Unholy, and there's two main ways that you want to use this website. One, you can just leave it on kind of the default unholy, and then you can just pick your game modes. You can scroll down here to the index and you can choose things like specialization talents, class talents, stat priority, etc. And what this is doing is it's showing you the top 50 unholy death knights in the game mode that you chose. And it's giving you a breakdown of where all of them are selecting their things, whether it be talents, gear, embellishments, PvP talents, all of that good stuff. Alternatively, you can come up to the top of the index and you can select top Unholy Death Knights. You can see it's got the top 50 all the way down to rating 1872 currently. You can click on one of the individual Death Knights themselves and you can actually see a breakdown of their character specifically. So you could look at the rank 1 2v2 Unholy Death Knight right now. You can take a look at his class talents, specialization talents, hero talents, PvP talents, gear, embellishments, enchantments, gems. The list goes on. You know how it is with WoW right now. There is a million different things that you really need to be trying to optimize. At the end of the day, the majority of them are like, you know, 1% gains here or there. So it's not going to make or break, you know, whether or not you can get to like 1400, 1600, whatever the case is right now. You know, keep in mind it is early season. So top 50 starts at 1872 for 2v2. So getting to 1600 and 2v2s right now is like not the easiest thing in the world. But, you know, without all of these little 1% differences, it's not going to make or break that. It may make or break getting up to like 1800 currently, things of that nature, but you can still get all of that information and more here on this website. Now, if you guys want to see a more detailed breakdown of how to use that website, murloc.io in the future, feel free to let me know in the comments, but I'm just going to give a quick synopsis of some of the highlights of what's going on with my character that you'll see in the gameplay footage later in the video. I've got the two piece set bonus via my helmet and pants. I got the helmet with Conquest from the Conquest vendor, brought it over to the Catalyst, you know, transmuted it into a set piece. I got my pants by getting to 1600 rating in 2v2. At that point, you get a little token sent to your mailbox. You take that to a vendor in Oz Ozkahet, or however you say it, and you can get your second set piece for your two piece bonus. On top of that, I've got three pieces of bloody token gear via my bracers, cape, and belt. And then I've also got a couple of crafted PvP items, my weapon and my boots, which are both embellished. I definitely, I don't think I was supposed to craft this with 10 epic heraldries. I think I was supposed to just craft this as like a green or a blue. And then ideally what you would do is you'd actually take those epic heraldries and make like rings and a necklace. That would probably be, definitely be better. Um, I made a mistake, but you know, it is what it is. I got the ascendance embellishment on it though. And you would want to get that even with a lower quality one. And then I got the 
I want to say like dust thread lining or something like that on my boots, which doubles the effects of your other Nerubian embellished item. So that's getting doubled, which is giving me a ton of haste, which is definitely one of your best stats as an unholy DK. For the talents, I'm running something very similar to what you'll find most of the top 50 death knights running right now in 2v2s. Um, some of the main highlights, I guess you could say, would be Strangulate for the PvP talent, Necrotic Wounds, and Doom Burst. Doom Burst is a lot of where your damage comes from in the arenas, as you'll see later. Um, outside of that, though, you're pretty much playing like a Rot build. Uh, if I look at my details here, you can see this is from... Uh, let me make sure my talents are still on screen. From one of my recent arenas, and this is how a lot of your damage breakdowns are going to look. Most of your damage is coming from your dots. Virulent Plague, Frost Fever... Uh, blood plague which is coming from super strain um, your blood plague is also healing you which is super nice outside of that your death coil is really going to be your best friend especially when you get your sudden doom procs i think it's right here um, this is going to give you a lot of damage it's going to complement or it's going to combo with doom burst which is what allows you to pop your festering wounds with death coil creates a very smooth simple rotation in the arena the only really complicated thing you've got going on is your opener and kind of how you want to set up kills, um, but we'll get into that later in the video. Realistically, though, for the talents, there's not too much else to write home about here. I mean, you've got Asphyxiate, obviously. I like to take A-Bomb Limb, but not everybody does. Um, I take Doomed Bidding, but I see a lot of people not take it. I've noticed in my damage breakdown that it's usually doing like 4% or something like that. Let's see. I mean, this match, it actually only did 1%, so maybe it's really not that good. Um, I've seen a lot of people drop this, and they'll take, like, Pestilence, or they'll take Ghoulish Frenzy. I think if I were going to drop it, I'd probably take Ghoulish Frenzy. Honestly, I'll probably try that later and see how it feels. But, realistically, not anything too crazy. For your hero talents, you've got Horseman's Aid. You don't want to take this right one, I don't think. You definitely want to have the Anti-Magic Shell popping up on you pretty frequently. Um, obviously death charge and then a feast of souls is quite nice um, other than that like i said not much to write home about the talents you can find much more qualified people on murloc.io to copy their talents than most of the people you can find on youtube so like i said before definitely recommend checking out what they are running it's very similar to what i'm running obviously but you can uh, get some more info there if you're really interested in like the theory crafting side of things with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into what will help you once you're inside of the arena. First things first, let's actually talk about your main job as an unholy DK. Now personally, I play a lot of twos, I also play solo shuffle and threes, but some of the stuff I talk about might be a little bit more effective in twos, but I can almost assure you it's still going to be really effective in shuffles and threes as well. But when it comes to your job, your main goal is to create pressure. How do you do that as an unholy DK? One, do damage. Two, interrupt as many spells as possible. As you get better, you're going to start to learn which spells are the important ones to interrupt and what can really mess up your opponents. And then three, look to cleave. Four, try and set up kills. It's a little bit, you know, it might sound a bit complicated at first, but honestly, it's not really that difficult once you start to break it down. Doing your damage, as I showed earlier in the breakdown, is actually pretty simple because a lot of your damage is coming from dots that are very, you know, a lot of quality of life, very easy to spread them. Death coil, ranged ability, you don't even have to be on top of anybody. Um, you have good slows with chains of ice and defile, so your damage is not really that complicated. We'll get into like the opener and your burst later, which is a slightly more complicated part, but damage, not that big a deal. Interrupting spells, also not that difficult. Ideally, at some point, you know, if you're really new, you don't need to worry about this too much. But once you get a bit more comfortable, you're ideally going to want to set up a focus macro or some sort of macro or combination of macros. Like, you know, you could have one that just mind freezes arena one and arena two, and you could have two on your bars, and then you could pick whichever one you need to use at any given moment. The way I've got it set up, which I think is pretty simple, is I have one button. If I press it, it mind freezes my target, interrupts them. If I press shift and then I press the button, it mind freezes my focus target. It's good enough for me. You know, at some point I might evolve and do something a little bit more complex, but this is kind of what I like to do for right now. 
Additionally, I target my arena opponents by pressing a keybind. I like to use three, shift three, and control three for enemy one, two, and three. I've also got keybinds for my teammates, but I don't really use that as a death knight, mainly for healers. So that's really how you're going to get your interrupts off, is having a good macro and looking at your arena frames is definitely going to help you as well. I'd recommend you get S Arena, Gladius X, something of that nature. It will definitely make your life a bit easier. You've also got Strangulate, which is a four second silence. It's definitely going to come in clutch on your burst phases. This is going to be part of setting up kills as well. Number three is going to be Cleave. Well, how do you cleave? It's actually kind of similar to how you interrupt. Ideally, you're going to want to end up getting a Focus Death Grip macro. For some reason, I've got two on my bars right now. Don't worry about that. Um, you're going to want Death Grip and Focus Death Grip. You could do like I've got with this one where you've just got, you know, one button. I've got T and Shift T, so I can't use a Shift modifier. Long story short, though, this will Death Grip my target. This will Death Grip my Focus target. So before the arena starts, you're going to want to determine who you're trying to kill primarily. Obviously, in the match, sometimes you need to swap your target, um, but then you're going to have a focus target. When you start the arena, you know, ideally, and throughout the course of the arena, you're going to be looking to consistently grip in your focus target, so that way it's you and the two enemies right on top of you, and you are just putting them in the grinder. You've got your A-bomb limb up, you've got your outbreak, virulent plague, dots everywhere, you've got 59,000 minions running around, you've got defile on the ground, all the good stuff, and you're just doing insane amounts of cleave. And you can pretty much do that the whole match if you're rotating your death grips effectively, keeping both targets changed, uh, you know, changed as much as possible. These things will definitely help. Number four, setting up kills. Now, this is like one that, you know, some of the other stuff I've talked about, you can still find like your rotation kind of online and icy veins and stuff like it's a bit outdated, whatever, but it's it's kind of, you know, it'll pass. But for this type of stuff, I can't really find much online other than like finding other YouTube videos that rarely sometimes talk about it. But when it comes to setting up your kills as an unholy death knight, in twos at least, and in shuffle, in rated 3v3s, it's really going to depend on your comp. Like, at the high level of play, you're going to need to determine based on your team, and even in some cases, the enemy team, how you really want to set up your goes or your kill windows. But for 2v2s, LFG, solo shuffle, all that stuff, you know, you really want to know how you can set up kills. Like, that's going to help you climb rating regardless of your teammates. You really need to focus on yourself, not your teammates. One way you can do this as an unholy DK is you can run in on your focus target, or not your focus target, your primary target. You can hit them with the chains, dot them up, maybe start popping, like, your raise A-bomb, your dark transformation. And then at some point, you want to snap you want to focus grip your focus target in. You want to blind both of them. You want to pop a bomb limb. You want to drop a defile, pop all your cooldowns, unholy assault, apocalypse, and you want to start going to town. Ideally, if you've got a teammate that you're working with, like let's say you've got a preservation evoker, they can deep breath right after your blind ends or right as you break your blind. They can deep breath over the top of both players, hit them with a three second stun, and then you're just getting off all your damage. If you have a teammate that's setting up with you, then at the end of their CC, you want to silence the healer and continue to apply pressure and do damage. And in some cases, especially up to like 15, 1600, you can easily win most of your matches in the first 20 to 30 seconds if you have a coordinated opener, like with your teammate. Um, obviously, as you get a little bit higher, teams kind of like know how to protect themselves from openers. They know how to like do things in advance to make your life not that easy. But, you know, once you get to that point, you start figuring out those things for yourself as well and you know how to deal with them. But generally speaking, a lot of times you will win a lot of matches by gripping at a target, double blind. So when I say grip in, like let's say this is my focus target. This is my primary target. I'm going to chains. I'm going to focus grip. Well, it says, won't let me grip these dummies, unfortunately, but I would grip this guy. Then I would blind. Then I would like defile, A-bomb limb, 
raise a bomb dark transformation unholy assault apocalypse and then we're just doing damage and you're in your into your just regular rotation at this point the last two things I'm going to talk about before getting into some actual gameplay footage or some live commentaries of gameplay that I had earlier is I'm going to talk about your opener rotation as well as your defensive cooldowns. So for your opener, like I said before, a lot of times you want to do a setup with your focus grip and the blind. But what do you do after your blind? It's not the easiest thing in the world, but once you get it down, it really does become muscle memory. I like to press as many of my cooldowns as I can, and you'll actually see it. Um, I'll put it maybe in like the first clip or there might be an intro clip. If you look above my portrait, there will be an ability order and you can see like the buttons I press during that kill window in the match. But I like to press a lot of buttons that won't break the blind first that are like setting up my burst. And then I press something that breaks the blind and I'm like into my burst. So a lot of times the way I like to do that is I will, you know, focus grip blind. Then I'll A-bomb limb, raise A-bomb, dark transformation, defile. Then I'll unholy assault. And usually unholy assault is the thing that breaks the blind. After that, I like to apocalypse. Then I might have to put like a chains of ice up or something. Probably strangulate the healer at this point. And then you're pretty much just rotating between scourge strike. You're using Death Coil when you have Sudden Doom procs, and then when you don't have any Festering Wounds on the target, you're using Festering Strike. And a lot of times during your Burst window, it's really just Festering Strike, Sudden Doom, Festering Strike, Sudden Doom. And you'll like weave in a Scourge Strike here and there. But I'll just go ahead and like show kind of what it looks. So I'd run in, Chains of Ice, Focus Grip, I can't show it. But then I'd Blind, A-Bomb Limb, Defile, raise a bomb dark transformation unholy assault apocalypse sudden doom then we're like festering strike scourge strike festering strike sudden doom scourge strike drop another defile spend some of our runic powder festering strike death call you know and it's at this point it's a super smooth rotation and from here, at this point, for the rest of the arena, you're like rotating your cooldowns. So up next, you're going to have Dark Transformation. After that, you're going to have Apocalypse. It's basically on the same timer. After that, you're going to have an Unholy Assault and Apocalypse. You're actually After that, you're going to have all of them back up. You're going to have Unholy Assault, Raise a Bomb, Dark Transformation, and Apocalypse all at the same time. And a lot of times, that's where the kill happens, is on the second coordination of all your cooldowns. Um, outside of that, though, briefly touch on the defensives. Anti-Magic Shell, insanely strong ability right now. I think a lot of people have started to realize this. If you use it at the right time, you can completely immune yourself from a ton of different types of CC, Polymorph, Cyclone, a bunch of different things if you're using it at the right time. Beyond that, though, if you're new, you pretty much just want to use it on cooldown. Once you get you know, better and you're getting at like the really high rating, you can start to think about when you want to use it. But until you get to that point, Trust me, just use it on cooldown. It will give you a ton of value. I'm sure if I go back and look at one of these matches, I mean, this match I had the most healing, apparently, and, you know, the highest ability was anti-magic shield, or anti-magic shell, and the third highest ability was the anti-magic shell that was coming from my horseman. Trust me when I say anti-magic shell is insane. Outside of that, if you're taking a lot of burst, like sometimes in the opener, it's a good idea to use Icebound Fortitude, it's going to reduce the damage you take, and on top of that, it's going to make you immune to stuns, which a lot of times you're going to be hitting, getting hit with stuns in the opener. Usually, though, you don't want to overlap. We'll talk about the next one, Lichborn. You don't typically want to overlap these two cooldowns together. I definitely make the mistake of doing it sometimes. You get into like an oh shit mode, and you just hit all three of your big defensives. But trust me, you want to get good about rotating anti-magic shell and one of these. And then the next time you need a defensive, anti-magic shell and the other one. And then if you do that and you do it over the course of the arena, you get a lot more value typically. And you only ever want to use them all at once if you have to. You've also got anti-magic zone. It's pretty, it's not like a fake cooldown, but it doesn't do the most, particularly in twos. You know, a lot of times your partner's not standing in it, this or that. Um, but a well-timed zone can be very good against a frost mage, for example, that's about to hit you with meteor storm and, you know, big burst drop a zone can definitely come into play 
Other than that, though, you don't really have too many defensive options. Obviously, in a pinch, you can drop a blind to create some distance or CC some people off you, get some heals from your healer. You've got pretty good movement, honestly, as a Death Knight this expansion with Death Charge and Wraith Walk. But that's pretty much the rest of your defensives. Obviously, Trinket, but, you know, that's not that big a deal. Other than that, though, I hope you guys enjoyed the guide section of this video. Let's go ahead and hop into some games. Set, set up, set up. No, he's going to fucking, he got his spell off. Interrupts on healer if he can. Nice, there we go. Oof. <clears throat> Oh my goodness. Nah, those guys, I mean, these guys just got put in the fucking grinder. I'm actually like dying to dots though. This is kind of insane. Fucking assass rogue was kind of going off as well, but that priest just got cooked. All right, I'm gonna try to focus priest, but cleave the shit out of rogue and just focus grip the rogue in perma. I might get sapped. Yep, I'm gonna get sapped. You got sapped now, I'm stunned. I'm actually just gonna ice bomb fortitude now. Swap to the rogue. Swapping 
back to the priest. Silencing the priest. I'm about to kill priest, I think. Oh, I got kidney shot in, never mind. Okay, he's done now. Nice. Whew, there we go. Oh my goodness, man. I've got a ton of damage. Yeah, they're just dead. And last but not least, take it easy, chefs. Oh,